Hi, I'm Rebecca Raveson and I'm from the Yorkshire Dales. I have a team of working gun dogs. I've worked in field sports for about 16 years now on grouse, pheasants, partridge and ducks. Being a dog trainer is very rewarding but hard work at the same time. I specialise mainly in working gun dogs rather than field trial. It's quite a bit different to trialling dogs but um, it's very good because you can train them out in the field while working them at the same time. They learn from a lot of experience. I own myself Labradors, Springers and Cockers. They work very differently in the field. Your labs work on air scent and your Spaniels work on ground scent, so on different days, depending on the weather. You might have a Spaniel that's obviously stronger that day because of the way the scent is on that day. So having a mixed team is very, very beneficial to me. I do like most breeds <laughs> that are gun dogs. Some are a little bit more headstrong, like your Vizslas and your Pointers, um, but I like to stick to your traditional Labradors and Spaniels for working. I'd say a good two years. A lot of it is basic training at home and getting them going on feather and fur and then the rest is experience out in the field um, handling them under pressure on shoot days because you can never expect what you're going to get on a shoot day and train that in the field at home so it's really good to test them on a shoot day at the same time while you've, you've got them under control. So what I would do is I've got two pups in at the minute that are 10 months old so from the age of like eight weeks to four months we did a bit of basic training obviously as and when um, they felt they could and never pushed them at a young age because they're still growing um, just basic manners teaching them to socialize with a pack of dogs um, taking them to public places is really good because it also helps them for when they go out on a shoot day it's not as if they've met new people they've already been through that process of life then we'll do some dummy training between the age of four and six months alongside whistle work, sit stay, just general training. And then normally um, we'll get them out in the grouse counting, which is in July, see kind of like how they're hunting, what, what needs working on ready for the shoot season and they'll be out with me this year sometime. Been very patient, <laughs> definitely very patient. Um, every dog is going to test you, definitely test you. Some he, he is uh, an angel. He was an absolute pleasure to train. His nieces, on the other hand, one of them is an absolute nightmare. But she will come. It'll just take a lot longer. So patience is definitely the key. A good gun dog is one that you can put in any scenario on a shoot day. They can be handled under pressure. You know, they can take it on board. It's their job and they enjoy it too. If any dog enjoys their work, they will, they will do pretty much anything for you in the field. Oh, I get asked this all the time. As I mentioned earlier, they work very differently to each other. And when you're on the moor, um, you've got a lot of um, rough ground and the spaniels are really, really good. And these work on air scent, but then when you get you know, your dogs, your peg dogs, these are the guys that you want on the peg. <laughs> there is. I know people, if you've got a dog that just hasn't got the drive and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried to get the noses down and get them working, some dogs don't work well as a pack, they might have to go to a one-to-one -one trainer, one-to-one -one handler. Um, so sometimes they just don't make the grade and most people will find them a, you know, a nice active pet home because some just don't enjoy it like others, but it's very rare that it happens. I got into gun dogs because at the age of 16, I got given this crazy little Springer Spaniel puppy. And by the time she got to the age of one, I was like, this dog needs to do something. So we started beating on a local grouse mower and um, I fell in love with it from there on. And I seen picker uppers out and I just kept looking, I was like, one day I, I want to be that, and here I am with nine dogs in the kennel. <laughs> so some of the most common mistakes that you can get with gun dog training. When pups are puppies, um, I find what you give them to play with as toys um, can make quite a few mistakes later on in life. So any toys that um, a puppy can squeak, 
it will cause them, um, them to mouth game later on in life and that is a mistake that can never 100% be fixed. You can reverse it a little bit but it will never, um, you'll never be able to go back from that. So I think and introducing them to game too young when you haven't got them retrieving to hand and their delivery nicely on dummies can also cause that problem too. So it's a problem that can't be fixed so it's best just to wait till you, you know they're ready. I'm a big believer when training your dog that manners are very important. Your dog should respect you, respect your home and that comes out in the training as well. So little things like when you leave the house, always make sure that you leave before your dog and you invite your dog out so you're always starting as you mean to go on. But you have to be clear with the dog so tone of your voice like if you lower your vo voice to say sit when they're not listening to the positive sit they tend to listen to it because you've changed the tone because if we speak to them like puppies all the time they're never going to know the difference between right and wrong it's how we use our voice and body language to what they know is right and wrong joining the national gamekeepers organization is a choice for all shooters and gamekeepers Help promote, protect gamekeeping, conservation and shooting as we know it today. Get on the front foot. Support an organisation that will defend what you love and we do. NGO membership comes with £10 million of third party liability, a dedicated firearms licensing team, legal support as well as many, many other members benefits. Be part of Britain's biggest conservation movement.